How many of you guys have seen that there is a worker shortage? For a while now, um, people have been talking about a massive worker shortage. People typically are ready to get back to work. Um, there's been a big boon in like um, in like sales. People are like shopping around again. The problem is people aren't working as much. They really aren't. They, they aren't getting back to work as much as you would have seen. Um, and all through the pandemic, as soon as like unemployment kicked on and people uh, and people ha got like laid off and people had the option to leave work, people haven't been coming back. Now, me personally, I've been working in the fast food industry ever since the pandemic hit. And um, so I, I know firsthand what it's been like to work in uh, to work in like low wage work. Uh, I know what it's like to live to work in a fast food joint. And uh, I know what it's like to deal with the customers. And let me tell you, it's been pretty bad. Um, weirdos walking in with like their uh, with here. Do I have a mask on me here? People like people like walk in, walk in. They'll be walking in like this. Um, uh, so can I? Uh, so so can I get a so they'll be walking in like this with their mask all the way down here And then they'll and then they'll like try and talk like around the glass at you And I've been having to play like a freaking game where I have to like shift myself Like where I where I am behind the glass to keep it between me and them as they like spit like disgusting Just like mouth particles at me while I'm trying to like, you know, stay alive Especially when my parents weren't vaccinated. I was like really I was really concerned Especially people who like live at home or like live with people with immune deficiencies or something along those lines I've had like people in my house house who've had to go get like chemotherapy i mean they, it, it's like this sometimes it's like this you know i mean i had someone i had someone like walk into work so i had someone like walk into my job like this it was like it was like on his freaking forehead dude i was losing my mind i was like what's happening here dude what are you doing man like <laughs> like i don't think your eyebrows are making covid but you know what he was doing what he's doing um and the and the ones don't even get me started on the ones who are like who try and pretend like um like they can't wear a mask or they don't, or try and refuse a mask or something. I had people so our lobby is closed and I had people who were sitting in there freaking like like vibing, okay? Legs up on the table, just munching, mask off as like people like little little kids were trying to like get around. There's like this old lady trying to like go all the way around them as they were <laughs> trying to eat their food. They like literally pulled the chair off the table and sat down in it. My, I was like, what are you doing? People getting angry all the time. People want to like take a bite of food or like t put their hands all over food and then hand it back through the window or something. I can't touch that shit. All right. With your grubby monkey paws all over it. You're trying to give that back to me. We're trying to kill everyone in here. It's tough. It's tough working in fast food. It really is. Um, dealing with customers, long hours, wor um, poor working conditions, and um, the low pay. Um, it's been a really big problem for a very long time. In this country, lots of people think if you're working, generally you like your job, or if you didn't like your job, you'd be somewhere else. And if that's the, and if that's the case, then everything is going perfectly fine. So this is why, this is what's been perplexing people recently when it comes to the worker shortage, because people weren't expecting people not to get back to work. What? You don't want to go? You don't want to go back to work? I hear my managers complaining, 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 twenty four seven about how we can't get people in. Nobody wants to work. Well, I don't know what's going on. People are calling in. People are quitting. People, what's going on? What's going on? I can't tell you how many times that I've that my phone is sitting right here charging right now. That my phone has gone off at like a time like this um or like after i get back from work that my ma my manager calls hey we're really short tonight um do you think you can come in you know i can't tell you how many times that's happened since the pandemic hit people don't want to come in I wonder why and lots of people okay for when they were confused but then they weren't confused they were like we know what the problem is it's unemployment but let me posit you another reason for this worker shortage it's not unemployment it's low wages that's causing the worker shortage what if and this sounds wild businesses paid people more especially low wage workers yeah this one this makes me want to dig straight down in hardcore minecraft you know what i'm saying as times move us further from the pandemic's beginning some artifacts of before of the before time seem to be more and more antiquated especially when it comes to how america works i don't just mean say companies arbitrarily forcing people who've worked just fine remotely 
uh, back into the office. I mean, trade-offs Americans have until now been willing to endure for their survival. Is a rethinking that has spawned a rash of worries that the recovery will be hampered as some businesses struggle to find uh, hires for open roles. So this is being a really big thing. People are like, whoa, we can't find any, we don't can't find any people who want to work for us. There have been lots of small businesses, lots of bigger businesses um, who are just, who are just absolutely like, hey, dude, we, we can't have any, nobody wants to work. They're calling people, they're calling people, they're calling people, zero applications. It's gotten so bad. Um, one McDonald's, one McDonald's literally started to offer iPhones as a sign-on bonus. You know, they're like, okay, listen, they can't, they can't cook. They, they eat hot chip and lie. But one thing that we can make sure of is that they at least have an iPhone to charge. All right. So sign-on bonus is now like a freaking iPhone, which I thought was hilarious. Um, really funny way to get people into the door. Probably iPhone 7. I think it is actually like an, it's like an iPhone 5, iPhone 6. <laughs> it's just like, they just like bought them off of the Facebook marketplace. And they're like, okay, Lizzie, hey, you can have one if you come in. Come on. Hey, look at this. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> they, they they're doing what they can. They'll do anything but raise wages for people. I've ate anything. Hey, I had a bonus. I had a um um you you guys who were working through the pandemic, you guys may have remember this too. Remember back when we got bonuses for working? You remember that? Like one, two, three dollars extra um on, on top of your paycheck while you were working, um, like your hourly wage. Um and then they started to slowly roll that back. I think like halfway through the pandemic, they they rolled mine all the way back, just all the way gone. Even though we're still dealing with the pandemic, our lobby is still closed, everything. They just roll it on back. All I got working was company script and a sign saying I'm a hero. That's deli that's a well, that's a amazing. It's true that companies and industries are finding it difficult to fill positions, but it's not because of a labor shortage. The laborers are there, and many people who are still unemployed are willing and ready to go to work. No, what we're seeing is the effect of a years-long wage shortage, and that lack of money in people's pockets is, uh, is playing out before us. Low-income earners, the ones making $27,000 a year or less, which is an incredibly low sum of money, are the ones who were hurt the most during when the pandemic struck. Janitorial workers um, for closed offices, uh, food and beverage staff uh, at closed restaurants, sales clerks at stores that couldn't uh, retain staffers at brick and mortar shops. Data shows that they are also the group having recovered the least since the COVID-19 since COVID-19 has reached the US. And unemployment rates still about 16% below the average nationally. This disparity between the number of people unemployed and number of open jobs seems like a paradox at first. But then you remember that wages in the US have grown far more slowly uh, than you may have assumed over the l last half century compared to how much productivity the average worker has become. So this is exactly what we've been talking about for a long time. The um, disparity between the wages people make and how productive people are. People these days are producing more in less time than we ever had in the history of mankind. You can, the amount of, you know, product, whatever you're doing, the amount of work that you can get done at work is now more than, than, than ever. The world is not any war the way it used to be. Mm -mm, no, no, no. What's been going on with wages? They've stayed relatively flat, sometimes even dip. So as we do more, we get paid relatively less for the last half century. This is something that we've talked about a lot and that we've been touching on fastidiously, trying to make sure that we can flesh all of this out. And it seems like we're finally reaching a breaking point when it comes to this, where businesses are starting to reap what they sow. They're start, I mean, at the end of the day, this is the business's fault. They're starting to reap what they sow. Every single person who said businesses can't pay more, everyone who said, oh, but what about the, what about the, uh, what about the profits? Oh, there's no possible way they could pay anybody more. Well, apparently you could. Lots of these businesses, it's not that they couldn't pay more. For many of them, they chose not to pay anymore. And people, if you get paid with unemployment, if you can make more at home than you can at work, why in the world would you go in, would you want to go to work? These businesses are starting to understand what actual um, uh, competition looks like. You know how capitalists, how neolibs, how liberals want to talk about, oh, the competition and the individual and the competition and the individual, you know? 
have any of you guys had a talk from like a parent or like um like an older person or uh or like some or like a grandparent or something where they're like you want a higher wage what you do is you march into your general manager's office and you cross your arms and you stand there very powerfully and you say i will be paid more or something like that in the battle in the battle dome all right you you punch and you knock out you knock out your working conditions. How many of you guys actually were able to negotiate like how much you were paid at the last job? And, and especially like a low wage job. How many, how many of you guys were like, so we're going to start you off at eight and you're like, I want 850. <laughs> they look at you like you have 15 heads. All right. Oh, you, I want to be paid more. That's hilarious. Hilarious to think that you got that. Only got a raise after review? Yeah, they do that. They give you like reviews. Shark. I was not able. Yeah, you don't. That doesn't happen. What fairy tale land are they living in? Oh, we got, we got. I got paid more after, and I negotiated that with them. Businesses right now are absolutely um, reaping what they sow when it comes to disenfranchising with not taking care of their workers. This is what happens here. They think that they could take advantage of their workers day in and day out for decades, and the very moment that people have an option to leave the work cycle, the death machine, that is being the working poor, where you don't make enough money to move up in life, and you can't stop working because you'll starve, now you'll be able to have an exit. You can go, to, you can go home, you can get paid more, you can pay all of your bills, you can take care of yourself, your, um, your kids maybe, maybe even have some to save. Or maybe you want to go back to school. Maybe you want to start a new hobby. Go to a trade. You actually have time for that now. Instead of working 10 hours a day at your, uh, at your job and have literally no energy to do anything else but like eat a Stouffer's and go to bed. Now you actually have the opportunity to improve yourself. Wow. And these low-income jobs are actually experiencing some competition. Not only competition between which is the least shittiest job. Competition of I won't work for you. And actually working here and everyone was freaking out like no this has to stop and even some republicans have been pushing to make it stop um republicans many republican states have been rolling back um the amount of money that people get they've been um opting out of the federal um uh, unemployment benefits kicking people off that and trying to force them trying to force them uh, to go back to work into a job that they don't want, push them back into the cycle of poverty because they couldn't care less for people. I mean, here's just Senator Ron Johnson who says who says he doesn't care if wa his wages don't cover child care. The marketplace has spoken. My man was like, my dude was like, if you don't have enough money to live, the marketplace has spoken. By the way, that, that's, you know, un unemployment benefits are not meant to uh, provide replacement wages uh, that was provided during COVID when it was nobody's fault uh, that, uh, that they were losing their job or they were actually being encouraged to stay home so we wouldn't spread the disease. We're, we're back into a normal type of economic cycle now where unemployment benefits are supposed to be a bridge to the new job, not uh, you know a, a welfare benefit that prevents uh, people from really having the incentive to, to go back to work. What about the argument that this situation, though, is kind of shining a light on some of the out of control costs? You mentioned the supply chain issues and raw materials on the business end, but the increasing costs that wages haven't kept up with for folks like, you know, for instance, things like child care that a lot of women are choosing not to go back into the workforce right now because at the end of the day, it's a complete wash. Their wages would simply cover the cost of having to pay for child care that they don't have to pay for now. Well, wages are set in the marketplace and businesses pay what wages uh, uh, they can afford based on the competitive situation, whether it's in a restaurant, whether it's in manufacturing, whether they're competing against uh, foreign manufacturers versus domestic suppliers. So again, that, that occurs with millions and millions of decisions in the marketplace. And I just have greater faith in the marketplace setting appropriate wage rates. Uh, but there's no doubt about it that wage rates are now being bid up because there is a, a labor shortage. And as, if you're a worker, that's a good thing. So yeah, um, oh, you can't pay, oh, you can't pay for your kid. Oh, your kid will starve. <laughs> Market has spoken. And he echoed that exact same garbage. All right. This has been the final straw for many low wage workers. The final straw, the way they were treated. There was an article that we read a while ago, back during the beginning of the pandemic. It was titled, um, 
the test of businesses is how they take care of their workers during this pandemic. This was the true test to see how businesses, to, to put Ron Johnson to the test to say that, oh, businesses do care about their workers. They will take care of people. It's all about the market and everyone cares about, everyone cares about their workers. You know, you'll get the best that we believe in the market. The, uh, the markets don't fail us. We fail markets. Companies failed to take care of their people. Exceedingly, they failed. Because if they didn't, well, the market would have spoken, right? People would have stayed in their jobs, wouldn't they? Why would why why would they go? Why would they sit at home? Well, why would there be a worker shortage if people love the jobs that they do and the market was spoken? And this was the best thing that happened. Layoffs, horrible treatment, um, pulling away bonuses and benefits before the pandemic was even near over. What? Just like some ben bonuses and benefits, like a couple of months. And then all of a sudden, poof, poof, gone. You want to find out the fastest way to fix this worker shortage? Raise your wages. People aren't out of work because it's a, it's a great meme and they're in their living rooms like flossing or something. Companies pay as much as they can because that's how that works, right? Why would companies have my wage like that? If they couldn't pay me more, they pay me as much as they can. If that's the case, my question is why are workers' wages rising the, in the fastest pace that it has in years? And even this CNBC, we love we love our friends at CNBC. Companies' profits could take a hit. Ooh, no, their profits. Well, it's either that or having zero workers. You know, the people who actually make up the business, who make the business run, the workers. Where have they gotten all this magical money from? Even Chipotle, who raised their minimum wage to $15 an hour. That deals a psychological blow to the restaurant industry. The top analysis for the restaurant industry is that Chipotle did a freaking psychic attack on the on the uh, on the restaurant industry. Wait, no more like seven twenty five an hour? That's incredible. How could you do that? That's mind blowing. The burrito and salad bowl giant said on Monday it would lift the average hourly wage for its restaurant workers to fifteen dollars an hour. Where'd they get all this money from? And even have an employee referral sign-on bonus of $200 uh, for a restaurant worker and $750 for general managers. Oh, where'd you, 700, where all this money come from? Man, just out of nowhere. As the second they, it's hard for them to run their business, money starts raining from the ceiling on these workers. Bank of America increases their minimum wage to $25 an hour. And right now they're paying $15. $25 an hour. By, my bad, by 2025. Whew. Baby, would you look at that? That's interesting. Where'd they get this money from? What happened to the market? McDonald's raising its minimum wage for um, for the the, the corporation's owned um, uh, owned restaurants to fifteen dollars an hour. What happened? Oh, good golly, dude! Who knew? What happened? The the, mar the market has just been shaken. The market has been shaken. C give me a freaking break, dude! They had all this money sitting around. They just didn't want to give it to people. Because there was no need to. It was pay what you get paid or starve and die. And most people, you know, starving and dying, it seemed like a, it kind of, it's kind of a drawn out process. It's kind of, you know, it's a little bit annoying if it's, um, if you ever had to, you know, give it, give it a real big chance, you know. Personally, I wouldn't, I don't think I would personally enjoy it. So people are like, okay, um, we work. And we work and you sleep and you die. And that was the market. And they were very happy to allow that to happen. They're very happy um, to have people sleep in their cars in the parking lot, have people not being able to pay for anything, work on uh, food, uh, live on food stamps, die, not have health insurance. Perfectly fine with that. Thankfully, this gave people the opportunity to take some agency back, to take some power back. And I can only hope that this shows people with all these wages raising through the roof to $15 an hour over the course of like a couple of months for several businesses. And that's not even all of them. And this isn't even like massive chains either. There are small businesses as well. With the increased amount of traffic, with more people wanting to go out, with more people wanting to go buy, especially with the stimulus checks down, um, people are, have more disposable money. And with more disposable money means people dispose the money. And small businesses can definitely improve on that, uh, can improve on that too. There was a little story about a small, uh, small bar 
that had no takers they raised their wages to $16 an hour and all of a sudden out of nowhere poof this out of the woodwork but just um application started funneling in he was like wait a second what's happening he he filled in all of his spots his business his business is humming now didn't take a single hit in profit wonder why treat your workers better they work harder they work harder you get more money you get more money you can pay more it's incredible of course we saw this coming it's ridiculous they're perfectly fine with people suffering until they've had enough i want to take it a couple steps further hopefully we can talk to these people help them wake up to the fact that their labor is worth more even more than 15 dollars an hour even sometimes in some cases definitely worth more than 25 dollars an hour Get people to start asking for more. Get people to start working, um, uh, working together to improve their working conditions. Remember, th the business is not just the owner. The business is the workers. It takes us to put together the products, to put value into the products, then make the profit. Remember that. Time for super capitalism. That's true. Everyone is an owner in super capitalism. We increase profits they go to everyone in super capitalism all right money it's just flowing it's flowing it's spitting it's going everywhere dollar bills there is no worker shortage it's only a wage shortage and people are sick and tired of being abused by these businesses thankfully they actually saw something and they're taking in uh, they're taking it into their own hands to do something about it give them hell welcome